Hello everyone, Father Bob Gross here. It is 11.28 on Sunday, December 11th. Um, we just got done with Masses and uh, hope everyone's staying safe with the snowstorm. I don't think it turned out to be as bad as we thought it was going to be, but so it goes. A couple things are canceled today. The 1 o'clock penance service in Lawler that Father Digman was going to be leading. And then the journey to the stable at Dan and Deb Hageman's house. That's been canceled as well. That's a bummer. So we should keep on moving forward. So I just got done having the privilege of baptizing Riley Joseph Ellsburn um, at Mass at 10 o'clock and also got done having Masses. So I'd like to share with you the homily that I had. So last week was the preaching of St. John the Baptist, repent, prepare the way of the Lord. If you remember, I preached about Repentance, choosing the better way. Then this last week, we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the great model of humility. And then today, we hear more about St. John the Baptist. He's in, the, he's in prison, and he's asking his disciples to go ask Jesus, are you the one we should be looking, or should we look for someone else? And Jesus says to them, Jesus says to them, the blind see, the deaf hear, and please know that no one takes offense at me. Well, I really think that um, we have a chance to really reflect on humility. And it's really through the life of John the Baptist that I want to do that today. Uh, and I really think it can be seen in this way. God's expectations and our expectations of God and how they rub up against each other throughout our lives. And John had that. If you remember last week, he was preaching boldly, castigating the Pharisees and the Sadducees, talking about a burning fire in which God's justice will consume the lost and the unjust and the wicked. And now you have his tune really changing this weekend. Uh, his preaching brought him to a dungeon in Herod's castle. It brought him to the point of him preaching about Herod being in an immoral marriage, uh, being married to his brother's wife. And that was wrong. And John called him out on it and threw him in jail. And in that dungeon, and a dungeon is a lot more depressing than any cell block in any prison in America. There's a sink and a commode in those cells. What John went into was dark. It was basically a hole in the ground. It gave a little bit of food to keep him alive, but it was a pretty dark place. And I wonder if John started to wonder, did I do this right? Did I, did I preach correctly? Did I follow the will of God? And he wanted to make sure. So that's why he sent his disciples to ask that question to Jesus. And I really think it brings up something in life, our expectations and God's expectations. I think we see that most clearly in our respective vocations. Like when I was a little kid and I thought about a priest, I had a certain idea of a priest and expectations. In high school, <clears throat> excuse me, in high school I had one. In college I thought about priests in a different way. I thought I knew what they were about. In seminary I learned and I was hanging around priests. I lived with priests. And then it came to the moment of ordination. I really thought I had things together. I know what it meant to be a priest. Then I went to my parish for the first time and spent a couple days doing priestly ministry. And then I started to ask myself, do I know what it means to be a priest? Because of the experience of priesthood was different than what I expected. Or think about being married. You meet someone, you think you know them, and you do. You love them. And then you get engaged and you think you know them and you love them more. And then you get married to that person and you live with them, maybe start having children with them, love them, you think you know them. And then 10 years later, you kind of ask yourself, do I know my spouse? The expectations of God and our expectations of things. And humility is yielding to God's expectations. We have hopes, we have dreams, tell them to God. But the humble person submits himself to God's expectations, God's dream, God's desire in our lives. 
We see that really clearly in Mary. Do you think Mary, what were her expectations in becoming the mother of God? What were her thoughts about the way things were going to pan out for her? What was she thinking as she saw her son whipped and crowned with thorns and crucified? I bet you those weren't her expectations, but God saw a bigger picture and she was willing to trust in that. That's being humble. Or John, humbly asking Jesus whether he was the Messiah or not. And Jesus so powerfully reassuring John that he truly was and is the Messiah. I think that's really a wonderful way to think about humility. Yielding our expectations to God's expectations and receiving them and living in the expectations of God, even if we don't have all the answers. And that's where faith and humility come together. So to conclude, I want to share with you a prayer that I say very often that helps me in this, and that's the Litany of Humility. And the Litany of Humility was written by the Cardinal uh, Secretary of State who served Pope Pius X, St. Pius X. If you think about it, it's really kind of amazing that a Secretary of State wrote a Litany of Humility. He's around a lot of power. He's around a lot of influence. He had the Pope's ear, probably. He's one of the closest collaborators to the most influential person in the church. And he probably never had a bad meal, never probably had liver and onions, probably always had filet mignon wherever he went and where he engaged world leaders. He's the one that wrote this. So I want to share it with you. And the one that struggles, that challenges me each time I pray it is, from the desire of being consulted, Jesus deliver me. If God would only consult me a little more often, I'd be more than willing to do whatever he wants. That's kind of that feeling inside. We want to be consulted when big decisions are made in our lives. But the humility is saying, I'm going to let go of that and let God choose it without me being consulted. Boy, that's humility. So whatever strikes you or challenges you is probably the place where you need to grow in humility. So as we enter into the third week of Advent, as we've seen the model of John the Baptist, and the model of the Blessed Virgin Mary, let's pray for that grace of humility. Life goes better if we're humble. Life goes better if we're humble. It doesn't mean to be walked over. It means just acknowledging first things first. He's God, and I'm not. It's one of the most important insights of the spiritual life. Hope the Lord grants you that insight this week and as we come closer to Christmas. So here's the prayer. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Then the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. So praying this really always challenges me. How does it challenge you? How does humility challenge you? For remember, Jesus said, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself 
will be exalted. May St. John the Baptist, may our Blessed Mother pray for all of us to live humility. Have a great week of Advent. Bye.